Welcome. Let's look at the symmetries for magnetic fields. So we have three general categories, and we can look at others, but this is a great start. Solenoidal, cylindrical, and planar. So solenoidal is a solenoid. A slinky is a pretty good example if you can see it. If you can't, then we are just going to pull up a non-infinite solenoid, but we're going to assume it extends to infinity. So our first thing about our solenoid is that they are infinite in one direction. And we're going to call this direction the z direction. And so with our solenoids, we can rotate along our z axis. But for our solenoids, our current is traveling tangentially to the z axis. And the tangential would be then t hat, or if you prefer, theta hat. So looking at a solenoid mathematically, we could then draw it a little bit as a solenoid. From one perspective, looks like this. From our other perspective, looks like a circle. And then we would have our current traveling in this way, and our current traveling in this way. So this is an infinite solenoid. What we get from this symmetry is that our magnetic field is only a function of capital R, the two-dimensional radius in the R, T, Z coordinate system. But unlike electric fields, the variable that it depends upon is not going to be the direction. What we get is then our magnetic field is in the z hat direction. So we would write that our magnetic field is in the z direction as a function of r. And we can put a z hat. Another thing that we get is that our magnetic field is 0 outside. And we have another video talking about that. Lastly, right, for our Amperian loop, we choose a square loop with one face outside. So our square loop might look like this from this perspective and would look like this from this perspective. And that's then that we would have, this is not in the z direction, so the dot product is 0 for these two. This is 0, so the dot product is 0 for this one, zero magnetic field, because that's side. So we only have one non-zero face. For cylindrical, cylindrical hopefully feels pretty nice from electric field. It's infinite in one direction. And that direction we will still say is z. So we can rotate around our z axis as well. But now we have that the current travels in the z direction. So for our cylindrical, we would have then a cylinder looking like this or looking like this. We'll pull one up. So our cylinder from this perspective might look like this to be infinite. But it might look like this for the face view. And so then we just have that our current is nicely traveling this way. Or we can say that we have a current coming either into or out of page here. So what we get for our cylindrical symmetry is that our magnetic field is only a function of r. 
very similar to solenoidal, very similar to the electric fields for cylindrical, but now our magnetic field is in the theta hat or the tangential hat. So what we can say, and I'll use theta hat, that V is in the theta direction as a function of R theta hat. So for our cylindrical symmetries, for our Empyrean loops, we want to use a, choose a circle. that has the same center as the z-axis. So I could choose a circle right, that has the same center or another circle that has the same center. In this case, right, it would look like a circle in this case or a circle in this case. For our planar symmetry, we don't deal with planar too much. There's a couple of problems, so we'll talk about it just briefly. Right, our planes are infinite in two directions. We'll say x and y, for example. And in our planar current distribution, then the current is traveling in one of those dimensions. Since it's infinite, if it's traveling at, say, a 45 degree angle, we just reorient our coordinate system until our current is one of the cardinal directions that we're talking about. So looking at this infinite sheet, we might have it such that the current is going off in this direction. Right, that it is going in the x direction while we have it right infinite in the x and the y. And so then we cannot do any sort of rotations because that would change the direction of the current. So let's look at it from a couple of perspectives. So our current sheet will look like a nice sheet in this direction, and then we'll have right a big square or circle in the other direction. What we get from the planar symmetries is that the magnetic field is only a function of the third direction and that our magnetic field is in the second direction if the first is the current. So for an example, if we have an xy plane and the current is in the x direction, then our magnetic field would be in the y direction as a function of z j hat. Another thing that we get is that we get the magnetic field at the center of our slab is equal to zero. So how do we solve these with the Empyrean loops? We choose a square with one edge along the center. So if we have this then, we would have it like so. This is if we had that our current was coming into page and then what it would look like here is if we have a current traveling along this way, we would have an Empyrean loop perpendicular to that. So these are how we choose our Empyrean loops based on which symmetry our current distribution has.